What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for the first episode to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Diamond is unbreakable, finally. We are seeing part four. We got part five airing sub, you know, in I believe October. And then part five, you guys know that I'm going to keep watching part four. And then, you know, watch part five when we get on Tsunami. I'm almost kind of hoping we kind of have, like, what happened with part five where we end up waiting, like, like, there's, like, a three year gap just so that I can watch part six, you know, completely subbed and I'm not, like, you no know, lagging behind. So, but I want to wait and see on that if they were just going to take a huge lapse in the timeline they did between uh, part four and part five, but. So here and there, and also as you guys also may have heard, the voice actor of uh, Mr. Satan, who has unfortunately passed away from cancer, he was also the voice of Old Joseph, you know the man that was behind the oh no oh my god, you know those classic classic JoJo memes. Uh, yeah, check out my super review if you guys want to see me to go in a little more in depth on that on you know that front. So yeah, since there's no real point in me to talk about it right here, since I've already talked about it there, but 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 before. We first I gotta say, love this episode. I'm really intrigued. I'm loving Josuke. I think he's awesome. I still say uh, Jojo is still best Jojo because actually, um, a friend of mine um, that's a big Jojo fan, like the man has like you know he's caught up with the manga and everything. He has, uh, he hit me up in my de um, on Insta. I posted a poll on my Insta about like you know oh. Uh, who are Jojo Jojo care like you know like characters you want to see in Jump Force? And one guy, uh, my, one of my friends, it, uh, said like he actually put three characters. It was like Dio, Jotaro, and uh, Saitama from you know One Punch Man. Ever Jojo I put best Jojo because he's like my, my he's honestly my favorite Jojo we've gotten so far in the anime. We'll we'll have to wait and see in the different parts you know part five, part six, part seven, part eight if Jojo can still keep that crown. Or, you know, someone else, or, you know, maybe Joe's game might take care of whoever the JoJo is in Part 5 and Part 6 are. We'll have to wait and see on that from. But, so, yeah, I put Best JoJo because he's, like, my favorite JoJo character. He's, like, also, like, one of my top favorite. He's, like, one of my favorite anime characters, period, because I just love Joe's, Jotaro. Like, just, he's just, oh, I just love him. But my, uh, a friend of mine, um, he said that his best JoJo is Johnny. Um, he, I'm not going to go with, like, what exactly he is, but he's uh, pretty much a JoJo in, I believe, Part 7. Which is, uh, which is actually, uh, which I'm not gonna go into any real depth about part 7 and the future parts of, like, other, since, I uh, you know, it, it, we'd be here all day if I was to explain different, like, how, about, what about there, but, anyway, so it sounds like, you know, John, Johnny, Johnny is his favorite Jo, is best Jojo, then by Yosuke, by Josuke. We'll have to wait and see if I agree with him and say Josuke is best Jojo, or my man Jotaro and his utter badassery keeps his crowd. So let us be, and, okay, but. And there's one last thing we, I have to talk about before we actually begin the review. The change in the art style. Because as you guys know, um, from part 1 to part 3 of JoJo, Araki kept the same style that pretty much a lot of mangakas were doing around the t same time with, you know, Fist of the North Star, uh, Dragon Ball Z around this. I think Z, I think Dragon was, no, I think, no, I think Dragon Ball was still, in, like, it was still just Dragon Ball Z hadn't happened yet in the, uh, in the manga yet, but by the time part 4 is, because I remember part 4 was back, aired in the... 80s was it? It was like the 80s or the 90s when Part Four was actually, you know, making its ways uh, through Weekly Shonen Jump. Yeah, and so, and of course, you know, the art style was, you know, big muscular dudes that look like Broly. You know, that's the thing. And I'm sure we all that, but here, everyone kind of has like, you know, normal body types now. Like, you no, know, like you know, Jojo, he's like definitely slimmed down a lot since we saw him in Part Three. Uh, me personally, I like it. I think the art style is a good change. It wasn't that jarred for me because I've seen it before a couple extra times. You know when Part Four was airing uh, back in 2016, because you know, that's when around when I started getting the anime. And I, of course, you know I saw JoJo all over the place because you know Part Four was airing, and you know JoJo's popping is very is really popular. So I mean I like the new art style. I know apparently Part Five was actually the first part that like you naturally uses a new art style apparently because he was like I guess Part Four was more like the transitional phase uh, phase for. Um, for a rock well, part five, he like he pretty much mastered his new art style with part five, apparently, from what I've heard. But yeah, enough of me talking about different parts, art styles, characters, all that shit. Let's get on to the actual fucking episode, shall we? So we start it off. We got we're starting with like you know we start in this new town, the new town that's going to be uh where you know, I'm, I'm assuming all part four is going to occur. Have it next. And so, you know, we see everyone, like, you know, like, you got this drill in the rear being like, you know, hey, everybody, good morning, everyone, and uh, I hope you're having a wonderful morning. I got just what I got, you know, you have this t typical woman, she, you know, she's cooking some bacon, 
No, got some of that good old fashioned bacon. Cracking some eggs, you know, cracking some eggs. Set up the breakfast, got some toast on the side, got the news running, got the radio on with that music. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then we see the arm was just was is is not is actually just an arm. Like or hand or whatever you want to call it. It's just it's detached from the actual body. It's just an arm just chilling there. So, okay. So I gotta ask this question. Was the dude that, was she like doing the cooking before she was killed? And then he killed her, and then he just kind of like left the hand there? Like he like cut it, like he killed her, and then her hand was just chilling there? Or did he do this beforehand, he was cooking with like a dismembered limb? I don't know. And so blood, kind of like the blood from like the hand uh, drops down to the ground, it's like, you know, that's a ripple effect you see in water. The title of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure appears. We then get to this cab, or in our course, which is a holding. A oh, man! A oh, man! A oh, boy! Jotaro Kujo. Best JoJo. Uh, you guys, if you guys saw my part three reviews, you guys know how much I love Jotaro. Favorite, one of my favorite anime characters. Anyway. Uh, so he's like asking around, like you know. So he's like, you know, and he's like, uh, the the tax driver's like, all right, the rest now we're back in business. The reception is clear when you pass the tower, and you know, Judge Rest like, you know, and he got any recommendations? He's like, uh, he's like, you know, you got you got anything to share? And or the tax driver's like, you know, hey, are you new to Mario? I believe is how you pronounce the place. I, I think it's might be pronounced like Mario or something because, but when I hear in the dub, I literally hear Mario. I don't know if it's Mario or Mario, but I but yeah. Which is the location where, where I'm, I'm assuming we'll be seeing part four. So, and so, so Jojo Rice, like, you know, got any recommendations, like, you know, like, pretty much he wants to ask around, like, no, no, the plate. He's like, oh, yeah, the miso marinade beef is pretty good here. He's like, you know, he's like, you know, anything, see anything suspicious? You know, strange. And he's like, sorry, sir, I don't really, I don't really see stuff like that. He's like, all right. And he asked him, like, no, a reminder where he was going, and he said, uh, in front of the station, the train station. So, he gets in there, pulls out a photo, he's like, oh, good grief, yuddy, yuddy. <laughs> I love Joe. But I will say this, I think uh, Joe Tro I will, I'm not, li I will, I will be lying if I said I didn't like his part three outfit, I like this more than the part three outfit, because, I mean, the part, his part four outfit looks pretty cool with the white, but I also got to prefer the black that he had in part three and all that. That's, and so I feel like that outfit looked a little bit better, in my opinion. Not saying that the new, his new outfit, the white, all white outfit is bad. But I honestly prefer the black one in part three. Such a contrast too. Like he was wearing all black in part three, but now he's wearing like pretty much just all white in part four. Anyway. So <coughs> so we then get introduced to this new character, which I, I feel like he's gonna end up being like that um that black kid that was always with Joseph in like the early parts of part two. What was his name? Smokey was it? Anyway, where we find out his name is uh Kuishi, I believe how you say his name, Kuishi uh Kuishi. And, you know, he's having there, like, you know, where I've been two bizarre friends. Like, bizarre appears a lot in this episode. Like, I know the show's called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but they're, like, really having home. Like, you know, bizarre, 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 JoJo's Bizarre, isn't it? Bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. Like, they're, like, like they're damn near beating you over the head with it. And he says, like, you know, he made two bizarre friends. He was, like, he'll start his first day in high school. And where he actually ran into Jotro, which... The way they had him, it looked like Jotro, like, need him or something. And because he, he was said, like, he was said flying. Like, it was like, oh! Pfft. It felt, like, the way it was animated, made him look like need, Jotro, like, just, like, need him. And then he just kind of fell. His, his uh, uh... Kuishi stuff kind of followed while, uh, while, you know, he was following stuff, got out of his bag. Jotro using Star Planet Man to get everything back into place. Hand them back his bag. And he asked, and you know, he's like, "Oh, I thought I thought I dropped this stuff, but he was like, you know, he's like, I didn't see where you are. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry about that." And he asked him, like, you know, if he knows where the uh, Higashikata uh, family is, and he lists his address. I forget what it was called. Where it leads to, like, oh yeah, you can find the you can take you can find that place because uh, he's looking for Josuke on the C train, I believe it was. There's gonna be a new one coming. He's like, okay, thanks, kid. Then we get to see these high schoolers. Actually, before we talk about what happens to our high schoolers, and that's when we finally get our, we get our introduction to Josuke, we've actually found out that Jotaro has actually been doing a lot since we last saw him in Part 3. Uh, he's 28 years old now in Part 4, and he's actually a marine explorer, and he's actually apparently, like, now granted we know Jotaro seemed like he had some smarts to him, judging from, like, you know, of course, you know, he defeated Dio uh, in Part 3, but, you know, he's, like, you know, has had, he's been doing really good, like, he has, like, you know, great grades, you know, he's done well in academics, the, he has great, he's one of the best well-known academics for his uh, research in ecology, I believe was the subject in question, I believe it was ecology. So, 
back to back to the high schoolers. So after he has this little after uh, um, Kiyoshi actually has this, you know, beats Jotaro. He then gets set up with these high schoolers. And he's like, they're pretty much all bullets. I'm assuming they're seniors. They're like, hey kid, aren't you gonna introduce yourself, you little punk? Like, yeah, look at us. We are your superior self. Like, don't, now kneel before us. You, you know, they're pretty much just massive dicks in all honesty. And it's like, oh, my name is Kiyoshi. Blah 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 blah. I forget his last name. And so, you no, know, after he's like, you know, whew, that was a close one, tells Jojo, like, don't worry, man, they'll probably take up a, a different bus. He then, we then see them, then they just start, and then we got Josuke. He just minded his own damn business, and these guys go after, and then they go after Josuke. And, you know, he saw, like, you know, like, he's like, oh, so uh, I actually have all, so, uh, reptiles give me the willy, so I thought today would be a good day to conquer my fears. And he's like, he's like, do I, do I look like I give a damn about your fears? And he's like, well, and, uh, and they picked up the turtle, and he's like, you know, he's like, hey, can you not, he's like, can you not put that turtle next, can you not with the turtle, I mean, I don't like reptiles. And then he bitch slaps Josuke, was so, uh, like, he actually, uh, there's actually some blood there, too. And... So he's like, yo, know, he's like, now if you do not introduce yourself, I forget exactly what he said, but he was really just being an asshole, like, you're gonna end up just like that turtle! And he literally just throws the turtle right into this pillar, and we see it gone, and there's blood, I'm like, a Rocky, what is your beef with animals? You, first off, you see, you saw what he did to dogs in part three, but now he's hurting on, but now he's doing it to turtles, too? I guess not as bad as dog, because, whew, what happened to Iggy? Oh, Lord. Well, I'm the Iggy and all this stuff that happened, like, every, like literally, do you, but, like, what is a Rocky's beef with dogs? Anyway, he throws a turtle, he tells him to introduce himself, he says his name is Josuke Higashikata, and that's where Josuke was like, wait, what? Josuke Higashikata? By the way, in case you guys wonder, I actually, I love the, I love in the English cast so far we've seen. I like in the good voice they got for Kiyoshi and Josuke, really, like, I've, I've, I'll probably listen to a little bit of what the sub sound like, uh, a little bit later, just uh, so I can compare and contrast them, but so far, loving the dub. Love Josuke's voice. And so it's, and so then he adds like hands like I don't know what this is like a passport or like a school ID or anything. And when it says you know, Josuke he got that it says Joe and Joe. Yes, me, Jojo has a much better ring to it. And he's like, Well that's that, that thing you know. Now give us now, and they also have to tell him to like you know, give him their his jacket, his pants for some reason, and his cash. The cash okay, whatever. Why does he want his pants and his jacket? Why, because Josuke got some fly style? I don't know. And so he's like, yo, now give us that jacket before I cut that fugly whatever. He just insults the man's hair. Fugly hair dip or whatever it was called. He's like, and that's when Josuke loses. He's like, question. Could you please repeat what you said about my hair? And, and so then, he, like, then Josuke co like, conjures up his stare, punches the guy, sends him flying. The guy is like, yo, what did you say about my hair being a fugly hair nip? He's like, what? Nobody says, like, I know what I heard! And he's like, he was just. And then you got Kyoshi being like, he was just said flying. And Josuke was like, there's no question what I saw. I saw a stare. So, and then. We see him pick up the turtle. The turtle's fine now. Like the, his wheel, his wounds are completely healed. Everything's good. We then see them. Then we see. Then we need to get back to the dude they punch, and we see. I see his face morph into something different. As we find out late, and as we find later on, Joe Tur Josuke stand as has the power to like, I guess, shape shift in a way of anything really it touches. Which, whew, that's kind of that, that's Josuke got one powerful stand. I have to say like. Like, I would say he's probably, in terms of power level, like, just like, that you can change it, like, and as we see, he can even do some other stuff with the shape-shifting. He's probably right up there with Star Platinum and, you know, the world, in all honesty, stand power, although there's probably some Arco Jojo fan being like, you idiot, he's nowhere near that powerful, or, like, no, he's more powerful, or something. Anyway, so then Jojotro meets, so then Jojotro, you know, confronts them, and, you know, they, then Jojotro, you know, tells Josuke what he needs to tell him, which is, well, before he actually gets to the actual... Huge reveal that I was like, wait, what? Not even if you guys follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you guys know I posted about this. <clears throat> I was watching on Tsunami. Um, he first, like, you know, he tells me his old bachelor, like, you know, Jos Josuke Higashikata, born in 1987, when you were four years old, you had a massive fever. I'm assuming that's probably the same thing that probably, uh, Jojo's mom probably had when she, cause, like, you know, she was like, cause she got a stab, but she couldn't have taken it. So I'm guessing that's kind of happened with, what happened with Josuke. The same thing. For 50 days, you know, he was on death's door, and ended up being fine. Mom, you know, went to college in Tokyo, yada, yada, yada. This place is the only place he knows his home. And then his father is, as, and it's like, good grief, yada, yada. He says, 
It's actually Joseph Joseph. Yes, oh boy, Joseph. He had an affair with another woman at 62. So this was before Stardust Crusaders actually happened. I when I saw it, I was speechless. I was like, wait, nanny, nanny, you're telling me Joseph in his early 60s is still kicking it? You're telling me the man still got game? I don't know if I should be pissed off with the man because he cheated on his wife, or I should give the man props because he still got game in his 60s. I mean, I still love Joseph, he's still an OG, but I'm like, Joseph, come on, why are you cheating on your woman? Hopefully we end up getting some explanation about this um, later on in the series where we see Joseph. Um, hopefully that, yeah, about, like, you know, why exactly he had this affair, why it happened, when it happened, you know, all the details. But, yeah! Joseph has an affair. We also find out that because um, Jos uh, Jotaro is, is Joseph's grandson, he's technically Josuke's nephew, which means that he's Jotaro's uncle. Okay, I'm no ex. Okay, I got like, and he says like, you know, bizarre. Like I said, bizarre happens appears a lot in this episode. But uh, can someone explain how this works? Because uncles and aunts are usually like brothers and sisters to the uh, to like you know your father. But this is with another woman that's her kid, so how is this? Uh, I feel like they would be more like cousins than anything, but I'm so confused. Like, uh, how, how, is this, how does this work? So, can someone please explain this family tree? Because my head's killing. Because my head's about to explode trying to figure this out. <laughs> anyway, so then, you know, he tells, like, you know, checks his watch, and, like, you know, they can walk on the way. We get this. I like this kind of little transfer where they kind of, like, fast forward. It kind of sounds like a record play. Like, the where he, like, you know, explains, tells him that, you know, he has to, uh, he gets one third of the inheritance of Joseph's. Of, of Joseph's. Uh, and he also found out that Joseph has actually started, uh, retail, as actually, is actually, um, a retail, a realtor company. Like, you know, he sells properties. And he says he has, uh, that Joseph. Or uh, Josuke, I should say, has his offers a third of the inheritance uh, from that. And so, you know, he tells her how, how Susie Q, you know, Joseph's wife, is fucking pissed about this. Rightfully so. I mean, your, uh, your, your husband of 61 years, as it was, cheated on you with a woman like her. Okay, if she's like 21 right now, or like she's like in her 20s, she, she looks like she's about her 20s or 30s. And Joseph's in his 60s. That means she was, I uh, maybe was at best, maybe, and he was 69 at the time, and he was, and he was 62 at the time. So this man, my man Joseph was like kicking it with like some 18 year old girl. I hopefully hope to God it wasn't any younger, because then Joseph, Jesus Christ, man, what are you doing? Please tell me you were drunk when you were just, because what are you doing, man? What are you doing? What you doing, man? What are you doing? And so, you know, after this, after he finds this out, he tells about how this is really, like, you know, fucked up the Joseph, the Joe Star name, and now, you know, they're, like, very pissed off. And Josuke, surprised, so just apologizes for this whole thing, being like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't want, you know, I don't want to be the reason for people, like, you know, uh, it's the end of, like, a, of, uh, the reason because a marriage ends, or a family, you know, um, you know, breaks apart. You, and then, and so, and Joe was like, why is this kid apologizing? He's like, why are you apologizing? Like, I, I think Joe Trump might expect him to be, like, pissed off or something. And then, these girls come in there and just, and they're, they're all just all over Josuke when... Joe's just totally, hey, 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 we're not done here yet, Josuke. And, 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 you know, the girls are like, oh, Josuke, Josuke. They're all over Josuke. He's like, you girls can fondle over his hair. No, no, you can see Josuke will get, get pissed. And then... Right when he says, like, you know, you guys, you girls can fondle over his hair another time, this sends Josuke off. He's like, would you care to repeat what you said about my hair? And so we get a fight duel between these two, between Star Platinum and Josuke stand. And, you know, the art image overall was really good. Um, the quick fight, you know, we, got the, we see it, we first see him, we first see Josuke just throw a punch with, like, his just a stance arm. But Jotaro's like, nah, it's clean, and immediately punches him. Quick! As we know, stop patting him. He's very fast. And so then you see us. Then we see the entire. So then we get a good look of his entire stand. Goes at him. Starts hitting him with a bunch of punches. Joe Drew does a decent job. And then he like actually he's like, sorry nephew, but you left your chest wide open. Right then is actually when um, 
Star Platinum actually does a time manipulation thing, the world, I think, and where he ends up being behind him, and then he just socks him just with a nice, good right hook, takes him out, and then the girl's like, Chelsea! Chelsea! He's like, well, you, you will quit your bitching and why before you get me even more pissed off? And then the girls legit start blushing. They legit start blushing over Jotaro, telling him to fuck off. I swear to like, you know, he's just he's kind of hot. I'm like, oh my god, you women are into this country. You like being treated like dirt by dudes. I mean, I'm, I mean, honestly, Joe Tro was right. I mean, like, come on. Like, you, like fuck off. Like, the man ain't got time for this shit. But, yeah, anyway. So then he shows him these three pictures of this um, serial killer that's going around this in this quiet little town. And there's a town right here that... In this town, you know, the town that, you know, Jotaro, that Josuke's living in, there's a bunch of, you know, a bunch of murders going on. He tells, like, you know, Koichi to, like, you know, just, like, you know, not get anywhere near, like, just haul ass, get the fuck out there, because, like, because as we know, he doesn't have a stand. At least as far as we know yet. And we see, and, you know, he tells Josuke, you know, he's just keep his cool, and, you know, take care. And then, you know, jo Koichi's like, um, Josuke, we're kind of late for orientation. They're like, oh, shit, we need to run. So they run out of there to get to school. We didn't actually hit, we actually didn't see, uh, we actually see this this woman with this dude. This woman be like, "Hey, pretty lady, what's good? Yeah, I'll take you where you want to go." Like he's just being an ass himself, trying to pick up chicks. And we actually, and then he's like, "Oh, baby, you're a knockout. Oh, Lord have mercy. Where can I take you?" He's like, "You'll take me anywhere. She'll, you'll take me anywhere you go, or anywhere I say." He's like, "You betcha." Then I was taking a one way trip to hell, just that, and then grabs him by the hair and. And then she like you know, throws it like like you know, throws his head right on the glass and it breaks it and hits him in like the metal card. Oh, I guess you guys see what Joseph was actually took it ahead and fairly because like oh, this guy seems almost like Joseph Joseph's woman like you know woman that's like you know like I can almost see a little bit of that Joe Star, you know <clears throat> in the, in her little bit. I can almost see why Joseph why Joseph did have an affair with her. I still say it was wrong. Like, come on, man, why'd you cheat? Why'd you cheat on your wife? A uh, situation. I mean, come on, Susie Q. She was a pretty girl. I like Susie Q. She was good when we saw her in part two, and when we saw her in part three, it was also nice. But yeah, so, <laughs> so they have. So then, you know, after so after that, you know, her father. Then the then a cop shows. He's like, he's like, oh, thank you, God, officer. Yeah, that crazy bitch just assaulted me. He's like, oh, you're on your own, kid. That's my fucking daughter, asshole. He didn't say that, but, you know, he was pretty saying, like, yeah, but he's like, yeah, bitch, you on your own. See ya! And so, you know, he talks to his daughter, um, he's like, you know, and they kind of have a little conversation, talk about, like, you know, Josuke, this is the first day of Josuke's orientation, talk about how Josuke, you know, has this personality similar to Joseph, even though I don't recall Joseph ever really getting that pissed off at the drop of a hat like that in part two or part three. My memory could just be off on that. But... Uh, so, yeah, after that, we then head over to this, uh, couple, they're just, just chain, and then, and then he gets bumped, and then he gets bumped by somebody, he's like, yo, watch it, asshole! So, th so then he's talking to his girlfriend, being like, oh, yeah, who, uh, who bumps someone doesn't apologize? Then the dude, they got bumped, and he gets engulfed in the color red, and comes up to them, and puts his hand on his shoulder. So then we get the origin story of this new serial killer, Angelo Katagiri. We find out that, that he's pretty much kind of always been a crazy psychopath, since, uh, his, actually, his first crime was... Robbery and rape. Yes, he raped someone. They show it too. Well, they don't actually show like our name is like fucking hentai. But no, they just they like you can get the from stills. You can get the picture. From they show that, and then we also see him also. And we at the and he was twelve when that happened. By the way, twelve. And so he also goes about how he's pretty much spent his whole life in the slammer. He was executed after he did one crime that was so heinous it would make a sewer rat puke, as Jotaro puts it. And that, you know, you so, you know, that was so, that happened, so, and then he's like, he's here in this quiet little town, we need to find him, you know, take care of him, yada, 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 yada. We then get to this last part of, the the last final part of the episode, where we get, where we see this rooms, where we see this guy, you know, he's holding this woman hostage, and, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna kill her, I'm gonna kill her, and then the dude insults Josuke's hair, of course, we know Josuke doesn't like peeling salty his hair, takes care of him, puts his knife inside of him, because he, like, Excuse me, if he jammed it, his whole arm, his stance arm into her, both him and her, and I was like, oh shit, damn, Josuke, come on, man. But then he puts her hand, she's fine, the dude has his knife stuck in there. So then, and so I mean, the, the next thing, he pukes out a stand, tells him, like, you know, and the stand, uh, this new stand tells him, like, you know, oh, I'm always watching, jo Josuke, wherever you are, I'll be watching. So, and at the very end of the episode, we pretty much just, you know, 
Um, Joe Toro is calling Josuke, tell Blake what you need to meet, we need to keep talking about, you know, what happened, uh, with, um, with just with um Josuke, what ha what happened with um with this whole new serial killer you know thing that's going down in this little, in this in the small town? Then you keep talking about that, and, you know of course you know him stand, you know blah 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 blah. You know you got Joe got to show Josuke the ropes on how this whole stand thing works. Um, and so you know at the end of the episode we actually see you know uh, Joe Toro, Josuke's mom. She's like you know Patrick's like oh, where the hell did I put that thing? And we actually see the serial killer. He's like, oh, what a Joski he got. What a lucky bastard. He has a hot mom. He's a lucky appreciate, motherfucker. And when you see that stand we saw earlier, i like on his shoulder, so the man is now standing. So, that's going to be interesting. I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen Kira yet. Because I was expecting that we would see Kira like the first episode. But no, it looks like we're going to focus on this guy for a little bit. We'll probably see Kira, like, I don't know, a few episodes from now. And then we'll see if he was worthy of getting, you know, best. It feels worthy of being, you know, named best film in the 2016 Incredible Anime Awards, which you guys remember that whole fiasco, did a whole video on that. So yeah, so overall I guess that's a 10 out of 10, the music was great, the art animation was great, digging the new art style, loving the dub, loving the cast that Viz has picked out for the dub, and yeah, so hope you all enjoyed the video, leave a like, share, subscribe if you're new, follow us, subscribe, turn feelings, link down to below, as always, come back for more, see you guys next time. Oh, oh well, when there's one last other thing I forgot to talk about, that, so I'm putting it right here at the end of the video. Uh, we, while the fight between Josuke and Jotaro is happening, we find out that actually, um, it's been, it seems like it's been like about 10 years since a Stardust Crusaders happened, but we also find out that, look, it seems like when he uses, like, you know, the time manipulation thing, and he, you know, he, he said he could do it for like half a second. So it makes me think that it looks like almost a rock he's given my man Jotaro the Gohan tree, where, like, he started off as an old and badass, but then when we see him again, he's a fucking pussy. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as Gohan, but, but I'm at the same time thinking, like, Jotaro, you didn't, like, you know, practice with this at all. You had 10 years, you didn't think, like, let's see, try, let's see, try, we can, like, stop time for a minute. Let's see if we can stop time for at least 10 seconds. Like, really, did you really just sit on your ass all day, Jotro? You didn't train with, like, I don't know, Paul and the Ref or somebody? Granted, Paul and the Ref was all the way into France, but... Surely there's gonna be somewhere you go practice how to, you know, do the time manipulate it, but whatever. Anyway, see you guys next time.